This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. One of my earliest memories of science was pricking my own finger to uh, draw blood and look at it on a microscope. It was really awesome to be able to see red blood cells under a microscope. I remember that being a really kind of one of those moments as a kid that I was like, oh, this is awesome. That sense of awe led Marty Mulvihill into chemistry. As a graduate student at UC Berkeley several years ago, he and fellow students began exploring the relationship between chemistry and society. They saw that with all the good that man-made chemicals have brought to the world, there are also those that harm human health and the environment. They organized a symposium in 2007 focused on green chemistry the effort to transform the way chemicals are formulated, produced, and used to manufacture safer products. And by 2009, the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry was born, with Mulvihill as executive director in charge of education and outreach. Because of the vapor density, let's see what happens. Um, oh, yeah. The center brings together experts not just from chemistry, but also from public health, law, business, and public policy. A key goal is to change how chemistry is taught and learned. Which one is high in energy, this one or this one? Whereas for decades students could earn a PhD without one lesson on chemical toxicity, the new curriculum introduces the topic beginning from their very first chemistry course, a class taken by about 2,500 undergrads every year. Turn it off at a little bit of hydrochloric acid. Okay. We're also making sure that we use safe and sustainable chemicals within the lab. So whenever possible, we're substituting anything that was hazardous, anything that was harmful, for things that are benign. Graduate students are offered a course taught by professors from eight different fields, including doctors Mike Wilson and Meg Schwartzman from the School of Public Health. They say that with about 72 billion pounds of chemicals being produced or imported each day in the U.S. and a thousand new chemicals being introduced each year, it's time to reverse our approach to how we manage them. It's so clear to us that it's, it's no longer possible for us to clean up chemical hazardous waste sites and pollution and so forth that we have to design safer chemicals. Maybe it travels through the environment, you absorb it, it goes to the tissue. But Schwartzman is a medical doctor who noticed that many children living near toxic waste sites were coming to her with asthma. It's like trying to catch a tidal wave in a teacup. We see babies born today with PCBs and DDT in their umbilical cord blood in them. And these are chemicals that have been outlawed or haven't been used in the U.S. for 30 years. Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry is playing a key role in helping elected officials here in Sacramento design policies to better protect the public and the environment against all kinds of harmful chemicals used in manufacturing products. In fact, in 2006, Berkeley and UCLA scientists presented a report to the state highlighting the lack of health and safety information about most of the 82,000 chemicals that the government has on record. Well, really, it got started with that report from UC Berkeley. The report caught the attention of State Senator Joe Samidian. When you pick up a product off the shelf or when you use a product at work, you'd like to ask, what's in it? And too often the answer is nobody knows or nobody will say. He introduced a law passed in 2008 requiring chemical companies to provide this information. You might call this the what's in it bill. He calls it the first step toward new chemical policy. I, Padilla, I, Parada. What makes UC Berkeley's role so critical is that this debate can quickly become all too political. What is the good science? What are the facts? Let's start the conversation there. Pushing the state effort forward is California's Environmental Protection Agency, led by Linda Adams. In 2007, she inaugurated California's Green Chemistry Initiative, relying extensively on UC Berkeley's expertise about chemistry, toxicity, and the industry and economic market in chemicals. When I first was appointed as Cal EPA secretary, it came to my attention that the legislature was debating about 50 bills that dealt with individual chemicals, and I think we all recognized we need a science-based approach. The agency has provided funding for Berkeley's new courses. Then there's the task of encouraging businesses to move decisively in the direction of green chemistry. You know, it's always tough to get people to rethink the way they're doing business. 
if we can bring everybody along and so there's a level playing field, then I think people will adopt these new approaches to green chemistry. To bridge the economic interests with environmental concerns, the next generation of chemists will need to have a better understanding of how the chemicals they make affect every aspect of society. The future of education is teaching people not just about the details, but also how to communicate with a broader audience. What we'd like to see is uh, chemicals and products that don't come at the expense of humans or the environment. I think we have the ingenuity and the know-how to do that, and we have to prioritize it as a society. From UC Berkeley, this is Roxanne Makashjian.